Hello, everybody. This is Bart Bettiga, the executive director of the National Tile Contractors Association. And I have with me a special guest today. I think it's a very important topic. Uh, and uh, I would like to introduce him right now as uh, um, uh, the chief operating officer. And that is Gregory Wood of Biz. It's, is it Business Incentive Solutions, Gregory? Is that the correct. name of the company? That's correct. And you're a California company. Tell us a, lo a little bit about your company, and then we'll get into the topic I want to talk about. We're here. We're located in Orange County, California. Uh, we do, of course, uh, process credits for every state. Federal credits are available everywhere. We're located in Orange County. We've been doing this, Bart, for 16 years. So it's something that we specialize in. And our goal is to help every small to mid-sized business take advantage of the credits they're entitled to. So we, we found out about you through a couple of our members that were working with you in the state of California. There's been a lot of buzz in the construction industry, some of my other associations, who have been talking about the employee recovery credit, Gregory. Uh, but there's been not a lot of talk about research and development uh, credits. Now, these are tax credits. So these are basically, obviously, people that have paid taxes that might be eligible for credit relief back. Can you Correct. explain maybe just quickly, uh, your company does not really do the work in the ERC credit area, but you right. do in the R&D and others. What do you guys specifically specialize in? And maybe tell, tell us, our members, a little bit, what is ERC? What is R&D? Well, ERC is the Employment Retention Credit that came about due to covid uh, businesses that were uh, that were retaining their employees. This is a credit that we do not process. This is okay. a credit that goes through the payroll. It's a great credit. We just do not process it here. We focus part on credits and incentives that are uh, not only R and D based that are based on activities, but if a business improves their uh, their HVAC or their LED lighting, they might be entitled to a 179D deduction. There are credits that we look at. Um, the ERC not being one of them. As valuable as that credit is, we just don't do that one here. So clearly the R&D credit is by far the most lucrative credit uh, in the country for taxpaying business owners. It is also the most unaware, confusing. And this is not due to the business owner not being smart. It's not due to their tax person not being aware. It's just simply an, an area that they're not aware of. And so these credits are lucrative. They're, every business in America is entitled to them, depending on the activities that they exhibit. And of course, the expenditures related to that activity. The government, the United States, wants these core behaviors here on American soil manufacturing, construction, uh, and construction is a huge, huge umbrella. You're talking flooring, paving, all kinds of construction services, uh, physician, chiropractors, dentists. These are activities that they're performing and they're incentivized to not only continue these activities, but to be successful and to change, alter, upgrade, and improve their activities. By doing so, they're entitled to a credit or which will offset, reduce, or in most cases, eliminate their tax liability. So why would the, comp the, the government do that? Well, they incentivize businesses to do this because it is expensive to experiment and to innovate and to upgrade their systems or their product. And whether that upgrade or experiment is successful or not, they're entitled to a credit. The more successful the business is, the, the more likely they are to hire another employee. Because Bart, this is all about hiring in the country and spurring the economy. 90% of jobs in America are provided by businesses with less than 50 employees. So it incentivizes these businesses to take advantage of a credit that's related to their activities and to their behaviors. Uh, it's wonderful. Unfortunately, it is a credit that most businesses don't take advantage of. Right now, less than 5% of businesses take advantage of this across the country. And so um, that's where we come in. So how, so are these federal credits? Are there state credits? Can you explain the difference? And do you, 
there are state credits, Barth. Federal, meaning all 50 states, of course, federal. State, the states are different. Uh, California has a very lucrative state R&D. Others, it's a lottery system. Others, they have to wait five years. So primarily right now with the state credit, we process California, not because we just want to do California, but because of the framework and what's involved. But clearly the, mo the most tax is paid into the federal tax. And so luckily federal credits are available in every state and we process those here. And um, our, our goal is to help every business take advantage of the credits they're entitled to. You, you kind of answered this question for me, but you know, we've got 1700 plus uh, members, about 1500 contracting company members. These are subcontractors, specialty right. contractors. When right. we've mentioned these R&D tax credits, to some of our members, we're hit with really significant skepticism. Uh, they go to their CPA and the CPA says, you know, we understand the ERC that, they, that you might be el eligible for ERC, but we have never really heard of R&D and how can a tile specialty contractor really be into research and development? And maybe that's for the larger contracting company. So you said, music to my ears that the smaller contractor could qualify but wh where does it come in what's the pain point in them filing and what's what's it worth to them if they've got 10 employees talk to me about a little bit about the application process and what your company does if we connect our member to sure. you well first I'll step back one step because you just hit on three really important myths and it is common that the business owner will think, well, our research and development, you know, I don't have a lab coat. I didn't, I don't have a patent. You know, I don't have a beaker dish. Therefore, I don't do this. And it's really, it couldn't be further from the truth. It's a development, a business development credit. So when anybody hears R&D, we think Albert Einstein, you know, in a lab doing something. And most people instantly think, I don't do that. So the number one reason business owners don't claim the credit is self-censoring. They'll say, look, I don't, I don't do that. Secondly, they'll go to their tax person. Of course, that would be the next step. And unless that tax person does this type of claiming this credit, they will generally think the same thing. Well, I don't think you do that, or I don't know when, again, unfortunately, that couldn't be further from the truth. And then thirdly, they start to think, well, how my business isn't big enough. Why would it benefit me? If a business, especially in the flooring tile, your segment, this is tailor-made for this credit because they are purchasing new equipment. They are are, are improving their processes. Every job they do is a custom job. So these are these are the, the benchmarks of this credit. And if a business pays tax into the federal government, they're entitled to offset that with a dollar for dollar credit. How many credits they're entitled to, that's where the calculation of their activities versus their expenditures. But a business looking into the credit, the first thing, the first myth to dispel is, well, we wouldn't be qualified for that when that's just simply not true. And a business owner that understands the credit, especially one that has claimed it through BIS or other sources and received the refund, clearly then, then it makes perfect sense. This credit is intended for manufacturing, construction, saw to wood, that type of behavior. Those behaviors in manufacturing had gone offshore. The incentive is to keep those behaviors here and to help spur the success of small businesses that, like I said, end up doing the hiring in this country. So first and foremost, dispel the myth that we wouldn't qualify for this. We're not, it's, it's not something for us to think of. Secondly, as I mentioned, I spent a lot of time uh, kind of defending the tax person. Say, look, it's not their fault. They're not dropping the ball. It's just, we do not do taxes here and they do not do what we do. So that's really important to understand. What we do, if you look at a business, the business is um, behaving as the business does and does their normal thing, where a business owner will think, well, that's just what we do. We, we exhibit these activities, that's our business. However, they're exhibiting qualified activities that entitle them to this credit. 
So what we would do through our marketing partners is we receive that file. We will then review the file. We will look into their behaviors and what they might be entitled to in terms of a credit. We do the calculation. We do all the work A to Z. And the first initial uh, report that we provide at no charge is a feasibility study. It's an incentive analysis to tell that business owner, here's what you're looking for. Uh, and what you're looking at in terms of a potential refund. So what we do, Bart, is we receive the files from our partners, ICA, Ted being one of them, and we do the processing here. We're, we're not reaching out to business owners directly, but if I can emphasize anything, it's the fact that uh, the credit's been around for a long time. If you go onto Google and put federal R&D credit, you'll see it's not something that's secretive, and it's there. Yeah, I'm looking at information. <laughs> So this is different than ERC. T tell me. This Griffin. is different than ERC. And I'm well, not an expert at ERC. During the pandemic, you didn't need to maintain all of your staff or. Uh, no, 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 no. That's you, exactly right. How far back can you go to a, to uh, to file? How far Federal back? statute is three years. So I'll kind of paint the picture like this. Imagine I'm a business owner and I file my taxes every year. Right now we're filing open year 2021 right? For, for tax year 2021. I filed my original tax. This credit that I'm entitled to, I did not claim or my tax person did not claim that on that return. Because so few businesses claim the credit, the program allows us to go retroactive back three years. So right now it's 19, 20, 21. So we will go back we will do the work and we will amend that year, which is very confusing. This is another myth that causes people to think, oh my gosh, you're going to amend, I will be audited. This is not flag and audit. It was simply not claimed on the original return. We do not change the original return. We do not alter that. We're not going back and asking for more travel expense. We're simply claiming that credit. We will submit that to the IRS and Bart, they cut the check 100% of the time. This is not a judgment call. They don't say, well, we'll give it to you, but we won't give it to Gregory. They're entitled to this. If they pay tax, they will refund that tax because they were entitled to this credit. Federally, we can go back three years. State of California, we can go back four years. And it's a very systematic approach. There's no flexibility or, you know, or uh, uh, making it up, inventing things as you go along. We will do the work. We claim the credit based on their activities, their projects, and their expenditures. We submit it, and they cut the refund. And again, so, our members could work with your company through our marketing agent, Ted Lavin of ICA Advocate. They could work with you. On uh, all of our members could work with you on federal credits, and our California members could potentially work with you on both federal and the state of California. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, for, uh, I hope that uh, our members take advantage of this. Uh, in our correspondence, we'll give you complete information on how to, uh, we'll connect you to Ted Lavin of ICA Advocate, who will then connect you uh, to Business Incentive Solution. <laughs>